Hi again, folks. It's been a while since my last video. I haven't been able to get much tinkering done lately, but I wanted to share some progress on a small project. I'm working on a stereoscopic camera using two ESP32 cam boards. I've got a breakout board that will hold two ESP32 camera modules. I actually shared how I made this using a PCB strip board and electric engraver in a previous video. Sadly, I haven't been able to complete the entire project, but I have managed to at least do an image capture from one camera using web sockets with the ESP32 board set up as a server and my PC running Python as the client. So I thought I'd share the C code for the ESP32 board along with the Python code for the client and demonstrate how it all works. As usual, I will post a link in the description that takes you to the code. First, to the ESP32 code in the Arduino IDE. Before getting to the sockets portion, I'll go quickly through the standard stuff first. This is readily available in numerous examples and even covered in one of my videos discussing the ESP32 cam board. We have our standard setup for the ESP32 Wi-Fi connectivity and ESP32 camera. Remember to set up the Wi-Fi network name and password. On to the setup function, we configure our serial connection. Uh, there are some uh, camera configuration settings to take care of as well. I will note that I am configuring the camera to capture grayscale images with a resolution of QVGA. That's 320 by 240. I'm interested in doing some computer vision work and this should suit my needs just fine. Uh, we have some standard camera initialization code here. And we have the Wi-Fi initialization code. And then we initiate our WebSocket server at the end of the setup function. And now I'll cover the, the WebSocket setup itself. First, of course, we have the WebSocket server header file to include. I have instructions at the top of the code listing that explains how to make sure you have the library properly installed. Next, we declare the WebSockets uh, server uh, WebSocket here. And now we define the handler function for when we receive a WebSocket message. There are various parameters associated with an incoming WebSocket message, including the message type and payload. Depending on the message type received, we can take different actions. For when we have a WebSocket client connected, we'll output a message to the serial monitor. And likewise, we'll send a message to the monitor when the client has disconnected. Now, the next type is the most interesting in, in this example. When we receive a text uh, type message from the client, we look at the contents of the payload. Uh, that's the, the text data in this case. Now, if the string sent from the client is the word capture, it will trigger the camera to capture a frame. Now the next few lines are sort of strange. Because of the way the ESP32 camera module captures images, we need to implement a workaround to make sure we return the latest picture grabbed in the frame buffer. Otherwise, you'll end up getting an old captured image. Essentially, we're grabbing an image and releasing the, the frame from the buffer before grabbing another image that we'll actually use in order to make sure we've got the latest image. And once we've captured the image in the frame buffer, we return the image data through the WebSocket using the send bin message type. Okay, that's send binary message type. In this function call, we pass the frame buffer pointer, FB point to buff, along with the frame buffer size. This will return all the bytes of the captured image to the WebSocket client. In this case, since we've set the resolution to 320 by 240, it'll return 76,800 bytes. Once the response has been sent, we release the frame buffer. If the client doesn't send a capture message, then we just send back the client's payload contents in a text type response, essentially just echoing what the, what the client sent. Okay, and finally in our loop function, we call websocket.loop to wait for websocket data. 
and that covers the ESP32 camera code portion. Now to the Python, Python code uh, running on the PC. We make use of the WebSocket client Python library and import that. Again, I've got instructions in the code header for exactly how to install it, along with some good references for how to code WebSockets. Now, I set up some constants for the image resolution uh, and then set up the net WebSocket connection itself. In the ws.connect function call, we use the ESP32 CAM IP address that is printed over the serial interface uh, to the serial monitor uh, when we first run um, the ESP32 um, code that we went through. This establishes the WebSocket connection. And now we enter the while loop where the user enters text commands that will be sent over the WebSocket to the ESP32 board. We take an input string str and pass it over the socket. If the user entered the word capture, then we have code that expects to receive a binary response as we discussed. The binary data we get back as part of the response from the WebSocket server is stored in this variable called binresp. Now we know this is a grayscale image um, data from the ESP32 camera and we declare an image array of the appropriate dimensions. We go through each byte of the binary response data in that loop and populate the image array. Once we've gone through all the data, we display the image. Now keep in mind that in this example, we focused on image data from the ESP32 camera module, but we could just as easily stream any data over the WebSocket. It could be sensor readings or any sort of telemetry as, as an example. So let's quickly run a demonstration of the code. You can see from the Arduino serial monitor that the ESP32 board is running. And we will first send a regular text message that we expect to be mirrored back to us. And now let's do some image captures. Okay, you see it all works as expected. And I hope this has been informative and you try this out for yourself if you've got an ESP32 camera module to play with. In a future video, I'll provide an update on the complete stereoscopic camera setup once I've put it all together. Until next time, have fun tinkering.